Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Here you guys are busy watching the team program for the Mission Convention. Hi. I am Martin Tulaka and this here with me is Zaskia Kotze. Um, I'm going to ask Zaskia Kotze to please open in prayer for us right now and then we'll inform you what's going to happen next. Please close your eyes. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you for the amazing opportunity we have to host an amazing event like this. Lord, it is, it truly is a privilege to do this for you in your name. I pray that you will please be with each and every viewer that joins us this weekend as we just praise your name in every way possible. Lord, I, I ask that you please be with us, lead us, guide us, and protect us. I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Saskia. We're going to be going over into the song service, and um, we'll see you after that. Goodbye.
song service did you enjoy that i did i enjoyed it very much okay so now just to get to know um us a bit more um zaskia where are you from and how old are you i'm from kubis dorp south africa and i'm 18 turning 19. oh wow okay i'm martin kabaha i'm from dambi and i'm 21 years old um just if something i want to ask you is how did you know about abundant life well i basically grew up with abundant life since I was small, Abundant Life has been coming to our church and I've joined almost every camp possible. Wow, that's really, really amazing. Um, and you are part of the Abundant Life 2020 group. I am. I am indeed. Okay, well done. I'm so happy for you. Now, um, I just wanted to know, what's your hobbies and your favorite thing that you enjoy doing a lot? Well, that has to be photography. Okay. I absolutely love photography. You've got a passion for photography, am I correct? I do. And then what type of photos do you enjoy taking? Well, that has to be sunsets. I mean, God is the most amazing artist. And if I can say so, sunsets are his masterpiece. Wow. That's amazing. Um, now, a question that's quite serious. 
Mm. Okay. Do you put the cereals or milk first in the punch bowl? Milk, obviously. No, you can't be serious. I'm not. I'm not serious. <laughs> Nobody puts milk first. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. Then the next one is um with popcorn mic a uh, popcorn, okay? Mm. Do you prefer making it in the microwave or on the stove? Stove. Definitely the stove. I don't care how lazy you are, popcorn comes on the stove. Okay, is that the best way to make popcorn? Best way. Okay, and you're the popcorn expert in the ABL 2020 group? I am. I am the popcorn expert. Okay, so that settles it. Then the next, ver the next f verse, favorite verse in the Bible, what is that of yours? Ooh, there are so many. Um, Joshua 1 verse 9 is mm -hmm. definitely one. Romans 8 verse 28. Mm -hmm. um, Philippians 1 verse 15 and 16. And Ephesians 1 verse 6. Wow, that's quite a lot. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure they're all powerful verses. The Bible is a whole book filled with treasures. Definitely. Now, I think you've got some information about our guest speaker for us today. I do, I do. Christian Martin okay, yes. is our guest speaker. And I do know him from Youth Fest 2016, if I'm not mistaken. He was our speaker, and I must say that was not only my first Youth Fest, but that was one of the most powerful Youth Fests I have been to, and I've been to four. Wow. So. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Yeah. And um, does... Does he have any family? Um, where is he from? So he's from America, and he does. He has a lovely wife, so sweet, <laughs> with two children beyond adorable. I oh. love his children. Oh, thank you very much for sharing that. We're going to be blessed with a special item from Sheru Sparks at the moment, and after that, we're going to jump right into the sermon that uh, Christian Martin has prepared for us. Over and out. Enjoy! Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I've tried to win this war, I confess My hands are weary
Good morning, Mission Convention. We are so excited for you to be here today. My name is Christian Martin, and I am so privileged to be able to share this time with you all the way from the United States of America to you there in South Africa. I am so glad to be here with you. I want to give a special thanks to Heino Tarleje for the invitation he gave me to be a part of this convention with you. And that man has a special place in my life because I love bow ties. And if you take a close look, can you see what I have? I have one of my favorites, bow ties that I own. It's made of 100% leather. I know did not pay me for this commercial, but I'm telling you that it is one of my favorite bow ties. And I am so, so happy to be a part of this experience. Um, I, I want to greet you in Afrikaans. I'm going to say happy Sabbath in Afrikaans. Are you ready? I hope I don't mess it up too bad, but here it goes. Halekahe Sabatak. Was I close? <laughs> I hope I was. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. And I'm glad you've had uh, a tremendous experience so far. And now we are gathering together to be able to take a look at the Word of God and to hear a message from Him. So do you have your Bibles? Do you? Grab your Bibles right now because we're going to be spending time in the Word of God as we worship Him here this morning. So... Before we get started, let's pause and let's pray for God, for the Spirit of God to be here with each one of us as we worship together. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, how thankful we are to be able to, to be together in this convention. Though I may be thousands of miles away, I feel that I'm together with my friends because we share the same faith have the same trust in you. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And we worship in spirit and in truth. And so here we are gathered together on this Sabbath morning. And we pray that as we open the Holy Scriptures, that you will have a word to speak to our hearts today. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, we will never forget the day that my family and I drove the garden route all along the southern coast of South Africa. What an experience that was. It was memorable in that we rented a car, just my wife and I and our two children, Elijah and Mariah, and we rented a car and we drove all the way from Dundee after a youth fest and we drove along the garden route all the way and headed towards Cape Town. Uh, you can imagine that as we entered into this uncharted, uncharted territory, we were in for a family adventure that we would never forget. And as we drove along the N2 highway um, at the border between the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape, our eyes were on the lookout for Blaukrans Bridge. Blaukrans Bridge was, was one of our points of interest that we were on the lookout for. It's, it was, it's regarded as the highest concrete arch in, in South Africa. So we couldn't wait to drive across this bridge. It was going to be a spectacular view. Our anticipation was high. We couldn't wait to set our eyes on this bridge. We were so excited. But things quickly changed for the better. At least for me it did. You see, there was something that Heidi, my wife Heidi knew, that she hesitated to tell me. She, she had found out about something that she wasn't quick to share with me. But it didn't take long before it was only a matter of time that I would see the advertisement. I saw the sign. It was the Blaukrans Bridge Bungee. The Blaukrans Bridge Bungee. You know what that is, don't you? It's the world's highest commercial 
bridge bungee at 216 meters above the Bokrans River. Oh, I could not believe that this was something that people did. And when I saw it, I said, honey, I must. I must do this. I must do this. And needless to say, I did. Oh, you bet I did. It was the most amazing experience. I got on the harness. We walked up this trail, took a zip line to get to the middle of the bridge. If that wasn't enough, then, then we got into position and, and they placed us. They made us stand right on the edge of the bridge. And there they instructed us to put our arms out. And we stood, I stood above, above this spectacular view, my feet inching closer and closer to the edge. And before I could even blink, the men gave me a good shove with no warning. And there I was. The acceleration was indescribable. I can't even put into words the kind of experience that was. Down, 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 down. I went with my eyes wide open. And if that wasn't enough, I found myself moments later gravitating towards the sky in, in, in ways that I can't even begin to explain how I felt. It was an unbelievable feeling. And it was the greatest, yet the shortest, adrenaline, adrenaline rush that I have ever experienced in my life. Wow. It was an unforgettable experience, something I can check off my bucket list. It was amazing. Yes, my family and I could claim that we were about to cross the Blaukrans Bridge, and we had a magnificent view. We can claim that, but my unique experience puts me in a special place. I can claim that I saw the bridge and its surroundings from a whole new perspective, unlike anyone else's experience. And friends, I want to tell you this morning, don't miss this fundamental point, God wants to give you and I a view from a new perspective. He wants to give us a whole new perspective in the way that we see the world around us, not just from a different altitude. He needs us to open our eyes and be able to look at people in ways that we have never looked at them before to see both the hurting and the comfortable, to see both the forgotten and the well-known, to look at both the downtrodden, the downtrodden of society and those who are wealthy. God wants us to see the masses of multitudes with and from a new and divine perspective. Jesus himself said in the Gospel of John, Chapter 4, verse 34. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. Open your eyes. Do you see God saying, I want to give you a new perspective. I want you to see the world from a viewpoint that no one else, many others don't see. I want to give you a new perspective. And today, my prayer is that he would do that in your life as we come to the gospel of Luke chapter 10. Would you come with me to Luke chapter 10? Luke chapter 10, and we're going to take a look here at a passage that we're going to focus our attention on this morning. Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 2. Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Listen to the words of Jesus. He said, the harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. Let's pause there. 
We're going to reflect on this very short verse and pray that the God of heaven, the Lord of the harvest, would communicate to each one of us. First of all, notice that Jesus says the harvest truly is great. So what harvest is he talking about? There in South Africa, you have plenty of, of crops. A lot of harvest goes on. What, is, what harvest, though, is Jesus referring to here? What are we to understand when Jesus, metaphorically, says that the harvest truly is great? Simply this. The harvest are young men and women all around us. It's the people you see. As you travel down roads, as you walk through the marketplace, as you go to malls, as you make your way through towns and cities, as you make your way through villages, this is what Jesus is talking about. The harvest simply are people, people all around us. The harvest truly is great. They're people who are ready and waiting to be gathered in what is needed. The only thing that they need is to hear that there is great news. They need to know that there's really great news. And they're waiting to receive the invitation to the greatest party that humanity will ever experience. There are men and women who are waiting for the invitation. They're waiting to hear good news. In her book, Acts of the Apostles, it was written by Ellen G. White, one of my favorite Christian authors. She penned these words, and I want you to listen to how powerful this quote is. All over the world, men and women are looking wistfully to heaven, Prayers and tears and inquiries go up from souls longing for the light, longing for grace, for the Holy Spirit. Many are on the verge of the kingdom, waiting only to be gathered in. Oh, waiting only to be gathered in. So whether it's a crowded marketplace or a lonely woman sitting on the steps of her front door, the harvest truly is great. The harvest is great. No question about that. We must not look too far. Even within our reach, within, our, within traveling distance, we, between an hour or two of traveling distance, within our reach, there are men and women who are waiting to hear the good news. But the Lord of the harvest has a problem. This is not just a local problem. This is a global problem. Because there are men and women not only in our local area, but there's men and women throughout the world and every nation across the globe. The Lord of the harvest has a problem. We read it there in verse 2. The problem is that the laborers are few. The laborers are few. Here in the United States, there's a famous comic strip that I'm sure many of you have heard before. His name is Charlie Brown. Have you heard that name before? Charlie Brown. And in one of his comic strips, Linus, one of his best friends, and Charlie Brown are having a conversation. And Linus says, listen to what he said, I don't like to face problems head on. I think the best way to solve problems is to avoid them. In fact, this is the distinct philosophy of mine. No problem is so big or complicated that it can't be run away from. <laughs> oh, Linus, his wisdom is to run away from problems. But we can thank Linus for sharing his thoughts. Thank you very much. But in the long run, I don't believe that his philosophy works, works very well especially in the lost and dying world. What's more, the Lord of the harvest is not the type of person that's going to run away from problems. No, not the Lord of the har harvest. He doesn't, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't turn away from the problem. He doesn't go into denial. The Lord of the, pro of the harvest seeks for a solution to the problem. He doesn't avoid or run away from them, but he looks for a solution 
When it came to the sin problem, for example, the Lord of the harvest, his name is Jesus. He chose to face it head on. He did not run away from it. He chose to confront the problem face on, head on, by making a pledge that it would cost, that would cost him a lot of blood, a lot of sweat, and a lot of tears. Listen to me, young people. You have what it takes. You love a challenge. You love adventure. You love a task that can be given to you that will require great sacrifice. That's what Jesus did. He confronted the problem head on. And he knew that the only way to resolve it would cost him dearly, would cost him blood, sweat, and tears. He didn't avoid the sin problem. Instead, he humbled himself to the point of death, even the death of a cross. Why? Because he was willing to do so. He was willing to do so when no one else would. He stepped in was willing to pay the price. Why? So that no one need be lost. So that no one would find themselves lost. But everyone ought to know. Everyone ought to know. All who receive Christ are given the power to become children of God, sons and daughters of God. That is great news. But everybody ought to know, all who receive Christ receive the gift of eternal life. It's a great gift, but everyone ought to know. The Savior has paid the redemption price for all. We are not our own. We are brought with a price. But everybody ought to know. Everyone ought to know who Jesus is. Or you begin to understand the Lord of the harvest and his problem. It's a problem indeed. Everyone ought to know, but the laboring messengers are few. Everyone ought to know, but many other laborers are distracted. The problem is, it's not that there's not enough laborers per se, but there's not enough laboring laborers. Oh, believe me, many claim to be laborers. Many claim to be. Last time I checked, last time I checked, the roll call, the church that we love, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, it has over 21 million laborers. By laborers, I mean men and women who have been baptized into the Adventist church into the family of God and they're enlisted as members they're laborers they're 21 million strong out of those 21 million over 21,000 are in the northern conference a local conference there in your territory about 21,000 laborers out of those 121,000 laborers hundreds of them are in your churches many of them are at the mission convention convention right now. Look around. You're all laborers. You've all been enlisted as laborers. There's millions of us. But the problem is not, it's not that we have very few laborers, but we have very few laboring laborers. There's plenty of laborers. The problem is that we have too many non-laboring labors. My friends, think about this. If Jesus could call a dozen men whose characters were far, far, far from perfect, they fell short in so many different ways, but Jesus took these 12 men of conflicting characteristics, conflicting personalities and, and background, very, various backgrounds, and, and he transformed them to be laboring labors. He equipped them, he empowered them, and as a result, they turned the world upside down, Ponder anew what the Almighty can do 
with laboring labors in this mission convention. It's not enough to be known as a labor, but it's necessary to be laboring labors because that's what the Lord of the harvest needs to get this work finished. Returning to Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Luke chapter 10, verse 2, the harvest truly is great, but labors, or may I add, laboring labors are few. Therefore, therefore, here's the solution, therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. The Greek word translated pray is tetomai which means to earnestly plea. Earnestly plea. It's not just your average prayer. Lord, thank you for this food and bless me as I go on this trip. We're not just talking about your average prayer. What this word entails is, is more earnest passion. It means to plead earnestly. It's interesting. It's a strong word. Let me share with you just another passage where that same word, tetomai, is used. In, for example, in Luke 5, 12. You don't have to go there, but there's a passage there where a man who was full of leprosy, okay, put yourself in his place, full of leprosy, full of leprosy, and, and the Bible says that he saw Jesus and he fell on his face and he implored him, Detomai. He implored him, Lord, cleanse me. Detomai. He implored him. He earnestly pleaded for Jesus to heal him. Let me ask you this question. When was the last time you prayed as if you needed a miracle to be healed from an incurable disease? With that same earnestness. Thetomai, that's the kind of language that Jesus is using to pray to the Lord of the harvest. The Lord of the harvest's way of solving the problem is appealing to his disciples to pray more than ever before and to pray like you have never before. It's an appeal to pray, to pray, to thetomai, to pray that God will send out labors during this mission convention. There's going to be time to pray. And I, and, I, and I appeal to you that when it's time to pray, not only will you join that season of prayer, but that you will agonize with God, plead with him as if you were pleading for a miracle from an incurable disease. Lord, send out labors into the harvest. The Lord of the harvest Here's the prayer. Now, the most common verb translated to send out is apostolos, to send out. Pray the Lord of harvest that he will send out labors. That's where we get the word apostle, someone who is sent out. Now, follow, follow, close me. follow closely here with me. Jesus, in this passage, though, does not use that verb, which is more commonly translated to send out, apostolos. But in this verse, that's not the word he uses. He doesn't use that verb. Instead, he uses a stronger verb, ekbalo. That's the verb he uses, ekbalo, which is translated to send out. In the English, it says to send out, ekbalo, but it's not apostolos. Balo, ekbalo, balo means to throw. Palo, to throw. Fishermen threw their nets into the sea. Palo. Ek. Ek means out. Out. So ek palo means to throw out. To throw out. Don't miss this. You see where I'm going with this. My sermon title today was When God Throws You Out. Listen, if et means out and balo means throw, 
the most literal translation which would be to pray that God would throw out labors into his harvest when God throws you out. Jesus is challenging us, challenging us to pray a very revolutionary prayer. All right, Mission Convention, listen. This is not business as usual. You did not come here to this weekend just to enjoy some good music. You didn't come to this weekend just to be able to, to be inspired with the message. You came to this weekend so that you can be challenged, so that God would call you. And it's a revolutionary call. Jesus prayed this prayer, a prayer that I want to give you, a prayer to pray to God, to Lord of the harvest. If you want to maintain the status quo, don't even begin to pray this prayer. Status quo, same as always. No radical change, no transformation. Don't pray this prayer. Don't do it. But if you want to have a longing to see Jesus return as the King of kings and Lord of lords, if you want to see Jesus with your own eyes, but if you want to see Jesus together with those closest to you, if you want to see Jesus with your friends, if you want to see Jesus with your neighbors, if you want to see Jesus with your family, if you want to see Jesus with many others, then I invite you to learn this radical prayer. I'm going to read it once. It's very short. But then I'm going to repeat it together with you. The prayer is this. Lord of the harvest, I earnestly beg you to throw out labors into your harvest and you have my permission to begin with me. Repeat after me. Repeat after me. Lord of the harvest, I earnestly beg you to throw out labors into your harvest and you have my permission to begin with me. To begin with me. Do you dare to pray this prayer? Jesus prayed that prayer himself after his baptism. Remember after his baptism, the scriptures record that he was led by the Spirit. Mark chapter 1 verse 12. Immediately, the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. Are you ready for this? Egbalo. That's the word that's used there. Jesus was thrown out into the wilderness. That was the calling that God the Father was giving God the Son. He was thrown out into the wilderness. Egbalo. Jesus was willing to be thrown out into the harvest. And now... As Lord of the harvest, he is waiting, waiting for your permission to allow him to do the same with you. As a friend, we've never met before, but, but we're, we're in the family. We're in the same family of God. As your friend and as a speaker here today, I'm asking you to please dare to pray this prayer. There's a great harvest in South Africa. There's a great harvest here in the United States. There's a great harvest in every country between here and there. The Lord of the harvest will throw you out wherever you need to be. He's going to throw you out where he needs you to be. He knows. He sees the big picture. And he's the Lord of the harvest. And he knows where you need to be. Some of you, for some, it will be abundant life ministry. God's going to throw you out into abundant life. He's going to put you in a place for you to be discipled, for you to be empowered, for you to be impacted, for you to be equipped to change and eternally impact lives of men and women and children all around you there throughout your territory. God may throw you out into abundant life ministry. For others, it may be more of a radical call. The Lord Harvest knows. He may be throwing you out into foreign lands with AFM, Adventist Frontier Missions. 
But, but, but that's not what I want to do. But wait a minute. The prayer gives God permission for him to do what he wants to do for you. You're giving God permission. And if you're going to trust God, you've got to give him permission to do what he wants to do and where he wants to put you. And it might be with AFM. Who knows? God knows. He might throw you out into a totally different culture. Or God may throw you out to experience a short mission trip, short experience, a shift, being able to impact a people within a short period of time, but impacting them for eternity. God only knows, but people are ready. The harvest truly is great, and God needs you. God needs you. God needs you. Right now, through this virtual reality experience, we, we, we're not together. In fact, most of you are probably watching this on your own. Some of you may be with friends, with family, but we're scattered throughout this territory. And here I am, thousands of miles away. But what I'm asking you to do, it's as if God himself was present right there in that very same room where you are right now. And he's calling out for you. He's calling out for you. And again, the Lord of Harvest waits. And the prayer that you can pray right now together is, Lord of the Harvest, I earnestly beg you to throw me out into your harvest, and you have my permission to begin with me. Is that your prayer? If it is, would you raise your hands right now? Just raise your hands towards heaven. Lord of the harvest, you have my permission to begin with me. Is that your prayer? God bless you. God bless you. God is here. God is ready. He's ready. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, each one of us hears your voice. The voice that is calling out for labors to take it to the next level. For labors to not be merely le labors warming pews, but labors who will live up to their name and be genuine, true, laboring labors. Lord, wake us up. We cannot afford to be non-laboring labors any longer. This pandemic is waking us up to the reality that we are living in the last days. Time is running out. The harvest is white, ready to be harvested, and we are the ones that you need to finish the work. And so as this prayer is prayed by many hearts, even now, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that convictions would come to many hearts and that you would provide the very means needed to enlist with abundant life, if that's where you're throwing us into, to enlist with AFM missions, if that's what you are throwing us out into, to enlist for short mission trip experience, if that's what you're throwing us out into. Whatever it is, Lord, you have our permission. And we pray that you would do it now. Thank you, O oh God, for answering our prayer. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God bless you. May God convict you. And let's get this work done, guys. We want Jesus to come soon. Let's get it done. God bless you. Thank you all for joining us again. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the sermon as much as we did. And please be sure to join us for the rest of Mission Convention throughout this weekend. Ms. T, will you please close and pray for us? Yes, I will. Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you that we could open up the Sabbath now with um, your word and as well as having an online mission convention where we can just learn 
um, to have our hearts on fire for you again. Thank you for all your love and your care that you bestow upon us daily. Amen. 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 And um, our next service will be tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. We hope you join us again then. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.